All right, everybody, this is part two of Revolve Feature. Make sure you like and subscribe, it helps me out. Um, I'll put a link for the, uh, this is the second part series. I'll put a link for the first part of this video in, in the description below. So let's get started here. So what we need to do is open up that part from before, from part one. We're gonna go up here to the file click the down arrow key and we're gonna do open uh, I'm gonna find okay so in this this area it's showing these small icons we can change the way that's viewed by going up to this more options we can change it to medium small details sometimes I like details and that gives us just the name. Okay, so this is the part we did, Revolve Base. I'm gonna open that file, that part file. And there we have our part that we made before. We're gonna we're gonna go ahead and put some dimensions on this now. And remember, in the first video I showed you how to change the document properties to three decimal places instead of two and again you go into this uh, left hand side here and then right click select document properties and then you go under dimension and you change primary precision from two to three and then say okay and that's going to change the properties for this document only remember that Okay, so let's get in here. We gotta get to the sketch. Um, and remember over here, this is the feature. And then the sketch, the feature is built off the sketch. So this is why it's called a feature tree. If you click this arrow, it'll show you the sketch that it built off of. Sketch one. Now we gotta modify the sketch, not the feature. Okay? So we're going to right click and first of all I'm going to bring the sketch normal to the plane normal to my eyes basically so it's perpendicular. So I'm going to click on this normal to icon and that brings that up to my eye and then I'm going to right click again on this sketch and go edit sketch. So now we're just in the sketch plane, sketch mode I should say. There's a couple of things here to start off with. First of all, I want to add a relation between this diameter and this diameter. And we do that by two ways. I've been showing you how to do it through going up here, clicking the down arrow key, and then adding a relation. And then picking up this line. You'll see it come over here in the... Uh, the selection box selected entities so this is my first entity and then the second entity is this one now I'm going to tell it what do I want from those two lines to be in relation to one another that way we only have to dimension the one line and they'll stay at the same diameter all the time they'll change automatically with the, with the one dimension otherwise if we put a dimension on this one and a dimension on this one then it is a possibility for me to forget if I make a modification in the model that I have to change both of those those dimensions. So with that being said, uh, I don't want them horizontal, they're already vertical. You can see that by the little green um, icon here. Each one of them are, is already set to horizontal, excuse me, not vertical. Um, we don't want vertical, we want it horizontal and they're already set. Uh, collinear, that's actually what we want. Collinear means they are going to stay in line with each other. Perpendicular, no, we don't want that. That would be a, like a T, and then it has to be 90 degrees and hold perpendicular to it. Parallel, um, in a way, but not really, because you could still have two dimensions on two different lines, and they could still be parallel. Equal, no, that's going to be the equal length. 
Um, so that's not what we want because it'll wind up being the same length then too. All things are equal when you use that. Fixed, that's not what we want because we're going to be doing a dimension on it. So collinear is what's going to be needed in this relation or constraint. So what's going to happen is this line is going to pull down to the same level of this one or this line is going to move up to this level and they're going to lock together. Now you can just hit the OK button here to get out of the add relations and there you have it. Now you can see this number six with the green box that matches this six over here which means that these two, that line, diagonal line like that, that means it's a collinear. And as you hover over it, you can see it says collinear with line 5. And that one says line 9. Okay? So what, what that means is if I grab this line, it'll move both of those lines at the same time. And if I do the same with this line it moves both of those at the same time. <clears throat> so that's one way of doing it. I found a little bit of a shortcut. Um, I'm going to get rid of those, the, that relation on that line right now. So I'm going to just, there's a couple ways to do that. I can hover over it and, and it turns from green to orange. Right click and then say delete. And now they're not collinear anymore. As you can see, they're not locked with each other. So like I said, the first way was go up here. The other way I found out is a little easier, or can be, if you remember how to, how to do this. Basically, you click this line, you hold the shift key down, and you select this line, and it already comes up with a box that has your relation, relations in it, constraints, and there's our collinears. And then I just click this icon and it forces them together. I think in the future that'll make things a little quicker than going up here, opening a dialog box, and then coming over here, selecting the enemy, entities, and then saying okay. So that's just another way to do it. Now they're both in line with each other again. Okay, on with the dimensions. Oh, and we'll probably have to do some fillets in here. Maybe we'll make another video for that. So we're just gonna worry about dimensions. Now this black line says we're locked. This black line says we're locked. Now it's locked vertically and it's locked horizontally, which means the line can go this way and this line can go this way but I cannot move the line this way because we are coincidental. Those two endpoints of the line are locked to the uh, SolidWorks origin. So these are black, they're, def they're def fully defined or fully constrained. They're not defined yet because we gotta get these all black. When the lines go from blue to black, then they're fully defined. So I'm gonna go over here to Smart Dimension Click on it, and I'm going to pick up this line and this line, and my diameter is supposed to be 2.750, um, but this is radius because it's only half the part because we're revolving around the center line. So uh, you can actually do math calculations right inside this this dialog box. So I can just type in the diameter 2.750 divided by 2 and it automatically puts in 1.375. As you notice this line turned black also. <clears throat> I'm gonna go through and get all the diameters set first then we'll worry about the lengths. So this is our next diameter. I'm gonna select this to the center line Again, that's supposed to be 1.750 diameter. I'm going to divide that by 2, which will give us 875. 
Now the groove depth is somewhat unique. I don't like to control from the outside edge to here because in most cases the print will, will denote the diameter of the groove, not the depth of the groove, so that we can control our ge geometric tolerancing better. So basically from this line to the center line, I have a diameter, again, I have to divide it by two. They want 1.630 divided by two, and that puts us at 815. As you can see, all these horizontal lines are turning black. Now here's gonna be a problem. If I try to dimension from here to this outside diameter, you are going to get an error. Not necessarily, it's, it's an error. What, it, what we're doing is we're over-dimensioning the, the, the line. Remember it was black? So we don't need any more to control that line. So when I throw this dimension on, it's gonna give you this dialog box, which is asking, okay, which of these dimensions, this one or this one, do you really want to control? Do you want the 60 thousandths to control this line or do you want the 815 to control this line? If, this, if you make this dimension driven, then you're gonna have these yellow lines are gonna stay on and I'll show you how that works. And I lied to you, but this one is grayed out. I apologize, let me go through that one more time. Okay, this is grayed out because this is not the driving dimension. When it's grayed out like this, it's considered a reference dimension. So basically it's just like, you know, what's the difference of the, of the groove depth if that's what you wanted to know. I could do the same thing from here to here and it's gonna give me the same dialogue. Now, instead of making this driven dimension or a reference dimension, I'm gonna make it a driving one, do the opposite. Now, we have problems. It's saying, which one of these do I not need in order to not overdefine this sketch? And as you can see down here, it says overdefined right here. So, Again, I want to control the diameters, not this height here. So I can click on this. And there's a couple of ways we can deal with that. But anyways, I'm just going to delete it for right now. So the best way to delete is just click on the leader. You can right click. Excuse me. Click on the leader and then hit delete key on the keyboard. And that gets rid of it, and it also gets rid of the overdefined sketch. So be aware of that. This diameter is supposed to be three quarters of an inch, so 0.750 divided by two at 375. Sometimes I like to pull these out where the dimensions are a little more laid out nicely. We can leave the 60 here. It's not going to control anything. It's only going to, you know, be controlled by the 815. All right, the width now from here to here is supposed to be 0.5. And did you notice before, if I click on this arrow twice or that little dot, it changed the arrows from the inside to the outside. Just a little note, you click on that dot, you highlight it, you left click on it, and then you click on the dot here, or that dot, and it'll turn the, the leaders to the inside. Just a little note. I can do a video about leaders and arrows and things like that. So anyways, now I wanna take the length from here to here, Oh, I don't think so. So I'm going to escape, use the escape key, get out of there. And then I'm going to go smart dimensions. All right. 
I think what we did is we wanted a dimension from here to here. And sometimes I'll bring them up so they're in line with each other, just so they look better. Easier for me to find the dimensions in the future. Um, what was that, 1.5? Yes, inch and a half. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so that's set. So all these lines are turning black, so we're getting pretty much everything's defined. The overall length, I think we dimensioned from here to here, and that was supposed to be two inches. So if I wanted to know the overall length, I could click that to here, and again, it's going to give me a dialog box that's going to ask me, well, do you want the four inches driving that these two lines, or do you want those all driving? So let's go ahead. It's going to overdefine. I'm going to leave this one, make this dimension driven, so it'll turn gray or a reference. So now it's gray. So the overall length is four inches. I can leave that there just, just for reference, you know, in case I make a modification. And the way you make a modification <coughs> is you can double click on the dimension and then just change the value to, let's say, 2.2. And you can see that the reference dimension just was updated immediately. So I want two inches. And when I double click on it and I enter in the keypad, I usually just hit enter to finish it, to close it out or select. Or you can go up here to hit OK, the little green check mark. So there we are, we're set. Now the only thing we've got left here is the width of this dimension. Since this is like a snap ring groove, we would probably dimension the width, we would not make two dimensions off the well, depending on the engineer. But in my thought, I would not do it this way. I would not dimension it that way. Because <clears throat> just if I change one and then the width doesn't hold even a couple of thousands, I move this over a little bit, then I forget to change this one. Well, now my groove width is not as wide and the snap ring is not going to fit. So I'd rather control, I'm going to click on the leader and then hit delete on the keyboard to get rid of them. I'd rather control the width so I know that when the print comes out, it's going to be 60 thousandths. Sorry about the phone. So we wanted to control the width at 60 thousandths. Now we just got to control the distance. And again, I would control from this wall to the wall of the snap ring. So you select, I'll, show, I'll slow down here. I select this wall, then I select the groove wall and that's where I would control that dimension. Now I believe, not sure of this, I gotta do some math here. Let's go, it's gotta be out further, but 1.2. Now if you double click and put that at like 1.5, it's gonna push it out here and make it look a completely different sketch. So you gotta be within kinda like the, the boundary. We'll go back to 1.2 until I do my math. Okay, we wanted 200, I believe, here, 260 minus the inch and a half. I believe the way we drew it is we wanted 200 thousandths from this wall to here, and I'm adding the 60 thou, so that's 260, and then I'll subtract it from the inch and a half. So I'll go in here, I can do the math right in here. 1.5 minus 0.260 and that will give us the distance where it is. Now if I wanted to, I could measure this and put a reference dimension. Uh, let's see here. Smart dimensions. And that should be 200 thousandths. 
Again, we get the dialog box that says you're overdefined. I'm going to make this this dimension driven. No, I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave the other dimensions driving this dimension. Oh, I did it wrong. So I'm going to go ahead, delete it again. Go back in here. Make this driven. Excuse me. And again, if you don't like the outside brackets, you can hit that same dot, put it on the inside. You can move this. And to move this, I'm, I'm clicking my left mouse key and then moving it around. So all these gray dimensions are driven. <clears throat> At this point, all of my lines are black. And it says fully defined down here. And uh, so basically, it's all dimensioned. If you have questions about dimensioning, I know this is basic dimensioning, um, but if you have any questions on this particular video, you can put your comments down. I'll see once what I can do to respond. Otherwise, email me. I have an email on the, on the About page. All right, that does it for part two. Um, okay, so let's rebuild this because we haven't rebuilt it yet. You can either do rebuild up here or control B. I'm pushing the control, holding the control down, and hitting B. And there's our part at this point. I will, uh, part three, I'll put the fillets on and we'll uh, show you how that's done in the sketch mode. I will save this now, save. If I just click on save and I already opened a file, it will automatically save it to the same f file name that I opened. If you don't want to, if you want to save it as a different name, then you would go up here and do save as, just like any other Windows program, and then I could add a different name in here, and now I would have two parts. That does it for this video. Uh, I can close out. I can use the close button here. Wait for the next video.